but I'm here to keep them on time and to keep you guys on time if you want to ask questions at the end. It is an hour and 15, so it's a, it's a good chunky session, um, but also we'll leave time for questions. Two important pieces of housekeeping. Number one, if you have a phone, by all means use it, but turn the sound off so you don't get interrupted. And the second, which is the most important one, and I know because I've been on the stage here presenting, we'd really like to know whether or not you've got everything out of it yet. So fill in the review, please, 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 like you want your guests to leave your review, these guys would like you to leave their review. Most importantly, what I'd like to know is the session useful or not for next year. So we've got four excellent gentlemen here. We have Luca, we have Francois, we have John, we have Pierre. I was going to attempt to pronounce the surnames, but I would get a help if they did me. Um, at this stage, I will say over. Thank you. Congratulations for that. 
I'm a skill of we have a very interesting story when it comes to fragmentation because we never wanted to become a PMS. Most of you in the room will probably should not be a PMS as an addition tool on top of it because basically automation is what we're known for. Um, we have about 80,000 uh, connected listings that are on our platform and the best service that we offer is the guest experience products that kind of automate all inquiries, all communication with the guest at the end and direct meetings um, with a much better consumption. We are mostly focused on property owners and uh, yeah, talking about the matter of fragmentation and thinking about the fact that there is an overlap and product like spam and if you are multiple founders who use the same thing over and over, we really started as that automated decision product and still having I mean, the PMS. So it tells a lot of things about the state of things in some street comes together. So I guess the question is, you know, fragmentation is because you have too many logins and lots of different tools, is it that the tools are not talking to each other? Like, what are some of the key things that you guys are, you know, identifying as a core problem? Yeah, I think you mentioned a few of those problems. I, I think number one is that there's so many solutions. And so many tools would have done the same thing, but they're just trying to get a different flavor. Uh, that's one problem. The second problem that we especially kind of when we are talking about is when we start building journey was that these solutions are not meant to be working with one another. And the reality is that you don't only need a pricing software. You don't only need a guest certification system. You don't only need a channel manager and a PMX, right? You need all the solutions together, and they need to be working with one another, and they need to communicate different information back and forth. And the industry is not being built like that, right? Um, and so, I know that we all took different approaches to this problem, um, but I think the, the approach we took was to go to these partners and say, hey, number one, choose one partner per category, because we were like, what property manager has to do is to actually do that first. You have to choose your tax up. And you have to then start implementing this different solution and trying to make them work well with one another. So we did that for property manager. We took our 10 plus year experience in the industry to choose the partners and then try to, I don't want to say force them, but like to, to really say, hey, if you want to work with us, you have to want to have your OPI so that there is a two-way communication and so that we can implement everything and put it up into a single dashboard. So what I'm saying with this is that the infrastructure for a non-fragmented ecosystem did not exist up until probably now, and still doesn't exist for many reasons, from, from, from many of these uh, uh, software providers. And the second problem is that when the industry started, there was this many different solutions, and so you have a lot of these legacy PMSs, and most of the PMSs that are out there are 10 plus years old, and so they've been built that way, but the industry has evolved dramatically since then. And so that's, uh, I think, the, the second biggest reason of why fragmentation exists. So I'm going to go with something a bit more controversial, and I'm going to say the fragmentation problem, the biggest problem behind it, in my opinion, is that we see it as a problem. Um, it's a source of innovation, I think, for a lot of tech companies, as John had pointed out. Uh, you've got companies ranging from guest verification to OPSA to experiences, like expanding within your business and beyond, and uh, it's only been happening from other tech players and all these interconnections that you're seeing through your marketplaces and so on. Uh, that being said, it is understanding that having multiple logins and having different vendors to pay for and understanding the dependencies between the different tools becomes more and more complicated uh, as, as you scale. So I think the one of the issues that I see with fragmentation is that a lot of uh, systems are going out there uh, claiming to be all in one or wanting to be all in one. Um, and this kind of blurs the lines of what they're really good at and therefore deceives you as the property manager when you're thinking of, oh, I need an all-in-one solution, I want everything in one platform. Um, you know, my tech team doesn't interact with the same tools that my sales team does. We don't build code on our CRM, you know, as simple as that. Every scaling business has different departments and different systems for those different departments. Now, your objective as a property manager is to figure out how to centralize all this information in all these different departments. Uh, and I think today's conversation, we're going to look at a few of the solutions um, you know, that you might not even see in the audience today, but for you to build uh, those data models and, and, and store that information yourself. Okay. Just as a 
commentary that when Luca and Francois said, a lot of it is just kind of the fact that the two different tools are not talking to each other in a, in a seamless way. And because of that, information, the same information is, a, is living in multiple places. And, and then people are trying to move things more, right? And I, I talk as more as a property manager, because that's where I come from. And that's where solutions start to try to figure out how can the various tools start talking to each other in a workflow that makes sense for your, your business. So for me, the, the end result for a property manager is that you have all these tools and you have you know, multiple same data in different platforms that you have to manually you know, keep track of. Talking to one another. I want to I mean I want to zoom out but just I calculated a few a few things for company and those people like bouncing on what you were saying also we have 127 software vendors we're a team of 57. <laughs> I was a bit blown by by the by the numbers. But again like every company is facing the same problem about having the customer data sets that are revenue data are basically being exploited by every team to the to the degree. It's also what seems odd to me is that the, the original cardinal sin of most of this industry, which I've not seen anywhere else, is the fact that the OTAs have basically created a system where the only integrations that were possible with them as the main source of customer data, right? the only recipients were the property management software, whose responsibility was specifically to integrate with those third party adding value service providers of which there is an overwhelming amount, of which there is, and we, we could have this thought two years ago, maybe we would have thought there was a clear winner, there is still no clear winner in this particular industry. And it creates basically having to duplicate the work multiple times over and over, reinventing the wheel, both for operators and for software providers alike. I couldn't talk about that a bit, a bit later, but it seems to me like there was nothing particularly in the industry to promote the communication of data in a free and open environment to actually be able to mine this data and extract the most value out of it. Um, so that's something that I've never seen elsewhere in any other industry. I don't think that maybe even healthcare or financial services, maybe I was very restricted by that. But this is the case of model. This is not the same level of regulation. This is not a regulated industry. Sometimes there is not that much to so. But it, it, it's basically my great to do this with still operating in fashion in 20 and 2020 plus. I just want to add a little context that is so well, well said, and especially with the OTAs. Um, now, <laughs> I have to be careful here with what I say. Um, but I just want to give a little story for background. Um, well, when I started my company, it was we wanted to be a platform that would help digitize uh, the guest experience. And uh, well, the first thing I was asked was, well, do you partner with Airbnb for it? And I was like, well, no, I don't. And I probably do need to because I need to get access to reservations and so on. And so we went, uh, my co founder, we went online and we tried to figure out how can we work with Airbnb? Like, how can we get the reservation information so that we could do whatever we wanted to do with it? And well, the answer is we couldn't. Uh, the API is closed off and you need to have an application to speak with people. So we reverse engineered it and we found a way to work with it. And we ended up going on Reddit. And on Reddit, we found an API key that worked. Uh, so the API key is like literally, you know, the keys to the kingdom. And it worked. And, we're like, yes. and so for the first like two months, we had API access. And we're like, you know, let's go raise this money on this. Um, two months later, it stops working. The cyber team in here, maybe, like, yeah, you know, you're not doing this. So I put on a fancy suit. And I went across the street to the Toronto Airbnb offices, knocked on the door, and I was like, hi. Brent uh, Swan, I'm doing a startup. And my API key's not working. And they're like, who are you? <laughs> um, so I explained to them, and they're like, great, yeah, come back to us with more properties. Change your name. How am I supposed to get more properties if I don't have your Airbnb? So we went out to market, and the only available systems that would allow us to connect to these channels were property management systems, because they were the only source of truth. Just, just to give a bit more of the technical understanding behind it, these APIs, only one system can connect to your OTAs. So if you have a really cool platform for trust accounting, or if you have a really cool system for whatever it is that's gonna help your business, it cannot happen right now because the OTAs only have one single uh, source of integration. And 
And I love what me and Alex said in the iteration four days ago, or a week ago, or as we can say, we finally changed this. I think all three of us actually have gotten it. Um, but there's still a lot of work to be done from a data perspective in order to unfragment this industry all the way from the booking channels down to your third party marketplace integration. So just thought I'd add a little flavor to it. Yeah, I think you're bringing up a really good point. And that's the job, in my opinion, of the PMSs that they have not done. Like, as a property manager, in the years that I've been a property manager, I've switched five PMSs. And if you've talked to anybody that has, like, scale on operation from a handful of units to, like, four or five hundred units, they have switched. At least, and they're still not happy with the solution that I have right now. Because in my opinion, PMSs have stopped doing their job. And I'm not generalizing every PMSs, but I'm saying most of them have. And especially the legacy one that have been around for, for, for a long time. They stopped doing it, in my opinion. And uh, like you said, the need of having a centralized database that collects all the information and demands this information from their partners, that's the PMS responsibility, and that's where I think the leaders of the future are going to be. Because otherwise, solutions like yours, either you go directly to your VP, which means then you lose all the other connectivities with all the other partners, or you have to work with somebody who understands this problem, for example. Do I have to fill out? I just wanted to add one thing, because here, you have exactly the case of a good connect. I basically had to go to a property manual software as APIs to get access to the data owned by the OTAs that they license uh, some way to, to, the, to the property manual software. For a company like the Connect, for someone like Francois, that was the go to market. So the point is to re access the data so that their service can deliver value. But obviously, we need a small startup eager to deliver value to their customers first. Focus has never been on pushing the data back so that they consolidate the experience for the end user on this property on the software, so that those users then have that holy source of truth that is supposed to be the PMS and has been lagging behind in my view for a little bit too long. Um, and, and that basically is the well, I think the, the kind of wheel of the industry has been for the past maybe five years with PMS that are struggling to innovate because they have a lot of connections integrations that they want to maintain internally. Therefore, it's very difficult for them to catch up on new technologies, the most reasons of which being, you know, you could have an example for smart locks, you could have an example for OpenAI, JGPT implementations, and there is still nothing for those added value service providers. They are very incentive for them to do so, I'm saying that in a dense fashion, for a, for a product company to deliver value to another service, while they still want to charge their end customers on another so it's basically a bit of a challenging point. I'm just going to close the window. Just to, to bring it back to like, the original thing, because you as property manager probably think, okay, great, that sounds like a you problem uh, when it comes to that. That doesn't sound like me, but it actually affects you directly, right? Because when you're looking at these different vendors and these different solutions, uh, we're limited by the data that we synchronize from whether the changing of the PMS, the OTAs, and so on. And I think what we're seeing more and more, and, and you might not see the uh, results of this just yet is API first companies that are going to drive that kind of interconnectivity between the tools that uh, you love and use or new tools that you're interested in. Uh, but one big thing that I always ask property managers is where is all this information? Where, where, does it, where do you centralize it? And for the most part, it's in my business. No one seems to use a you know, Google Drive, although there soon, or a Notion, or some sort of Excel sheet to really centralize and use that as their data. This is the source of truth for my business, and then I push it to the PMS, and I push it to this and that. Uh, so I urge property managers to really start thinking about their business as a tech company, uh, as well as, of course, a hospitality company, uh, because things are going to start getting messier, I think, before they get cleaner when it comes to technology. So the way I see it, I guess, of this conversation is FX is kind of a distributed solution as opposed to like an entity creating a singular API for our industry. Just because if you do that, innovation gets locked down to like that one API that you know, is created, right? So I want to kind of move on and um, some things that uh, we've been thinking about in terms of moving this forward.
So this is my middle name's uh, absolute potential all the potential solutions. But these four options that we have on the screen right now are kind of ways that we see as kind of aspects of how the industry starts to um, defragment. So first, you have consolidation via acquisition, right? So these are bigger companies, uh, which be private equity companies, or larger companies buying up smaller players, basically consolidating the tech with the, you know, usually it's to say we're bringing that technology in-house, but sometimes it could be to kill a competitor, sometimes to buy, you know, buy, um, you know, buy their customers uh, or that. And so the consolidation part is, Interesting because it puts it, you know, it can get to this like one platform that does everything. At the same time, if you do wish for that, you may start having limited options in terms of the technology solutions that, that is available for you to run and operate your business. Integration via marketplace. And I think right now there's a, a lot of activity within our industry right now on marketplaces where different companies are partnering and creating a marketplace and then the property managers go in and they can choose from three pricing software and five um, accounting software and a lot of business. It gives you a lot of options, uh, but one of the uh, cons of that is again, the PMS becomes the gatekeeper who gets to be on that marketplace and who doesn't, right? So the PMS is essentially deciding for you the options that you have available. White label is similar, except that it's, um, it's an internal decision by, by the company, and they choose who they want to partner with and white label their partner. Um, that was along the lines of what uh, Julio was saying. Actually, for me, I would say um, no one on this panel is on the acquisition side, but on the integration and marketplace. Um, here, I would say has been cool right now. They're doing a lot of marketplace. Uh, is that fair or I'm, I'm asking? I'm not done. No, okay, that's fine. Um, then the fourth option right now, and this is not a long-term option, is essentially semi-custom builds so that you have multiple tools that don't necessarily talk to each other, but creating workflows and links so that they actually start working together so you get your option of the, you know, of the tools that you want to use um, without the PMS is to be confirmed. Now the reason why I, I brought this up is I'd like you guys kind of discuss the various aspects and what you see the pros, cons, um, both for you as a technology provider and what it means for property managers. Uh, I'm biased. Because <laughs> I, I think you're probably the first, I, I guess, full white label. Um, I mean, and, and again, for, for us, it was a, a need as a property manager myself uh, to just simplify. I, I think anything that becomes scalable needs to be first simplified, and to simplify things is actually very complicated, and it goes a lot of work into it. But uh, you know, I would always like to, to use Apple as an example of a company that simplified things from a user experience, from a product standpoint. But what's behind it is extremely complex, but they focus on the end of the day on the user experience. And in my opinion, 80% of the market is eventually going to go. So obviously my opinion, and some people here have a different opinion. But I, I believe because at the end of the day, property manager, property management is about the guest, focusing on creating a guest experience, focusing on getting the best assets, and not spending and wasting your time every day on making sure your technology works and be on top of what's the latest piece of technology you should be using. I think that's someone else's job. If you look in every other industry, that consolidation already happened. Look into the, into the sell side and marketing side with a system like Hotspot. It's a one system that does all. Do they, do they do everything in house? No, they integrate other solutions within their system, but that's their job to make sure that they maintain the system and the system works properly and is at, as updated as possible for their users, right? Um, Obviously, they, I think that the other solution that is going to still exist, um, I think you call it as a kind of like a customized build, a custom build. I think large property managers probably are always going to have a custom build because I want to say large into the thousands of units because they're going to have very specific 
needs that they're not going to be met by other players. The R2, I think, especially in the marketplace, I think it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. It, I'm not saying it's impossible, but the way it's done today is not going to work. It wasn't working for me as a property manager, and I don't hear a lot of people being happy about that. So that's, uh, that's my view. Um, the way I see it is, okay, so acquisitions, let's bring that. There's two, I mean, there's multiple reasons why companies get acquired, running out of money, or uh, they're doing really well, and they want to sell out, and there's so many different reasons. Um, when I see private equity groups buy out vacation rental companies or uh, systems, it's squeezing the juice. They don't care about building new functionality. Uh, they just care about charging you as much as they can. Uh, when I look at companies working together and buying each other out, uh, then there's opportunities there of collaboration and companies being embedded within one another. Uh, but we haven't seen that yet. I mean, can you guys name a uh, company that bought another company and then actually embedded systems within it? I would say embedded, but I think the closest I have seen is when testing on uh, your order. And there's two separate systems, but they're not uh, sunsetting your products not yet, right? So, so are they not sunsetting because there's a lot of customers, or are they not sunsetting because the technology? So I'm not going to go in there because guess some of our partners. But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, when I look at marketplaces, white labels, and semi custom built, I think this is where uh, you as a property manager needs to start thinking about what is most important and what is the problem you're trying to solve. Uh, so when you're bringing on technology, sometimes I see operators kind of just sign up for a bunch of tech because it solves a bunch of problems, but they don't think of it as the infrastructure of their business, right? Again, I go back to this idea of data and so on, like how does this information shift from one place to the next? Um, so I do think marketplaces are going to continue to exist. It's, it's in every industry, uh, whether it's your accounting systems, they integrate to every other tool, whether it's what you mentioned, HubSpot, they have a marketplace with thousands of integrations. Uh, but I think for operators in the vacation rental industry, it's going to be these sort of Zapier-like uh, functionalities because every single property management company that I speak with is different. Every owner is different, every guest is different. Everything is different, and that is the biggest problem with a one-size-fits-all, one-stop shop system, is that it just won't work for your business. Uh, on paper, it works for most businesses, but it doesn't really work for your business. And so the idea of bringing on best in class, white labeling some of this technology, providing a marketplace, as much as you go back to this idea of, oh, but it's fragmented. It's fragmented because your operations are fragmented. Um, you're not running a hotel and you have one building and everything's in the same place. You have a fragmented business in a way. And so the tech stack reflects that as well to meet your unique hospitality needs. Uh, so again, I don't have a specific view as whether or not the white label or marketplace or custom built in the way. I think it's, like, I think it's a combination of, of all three of them um, that, that's going to propel you into the next sort of digital age for hospitality. I just want to address one thing you said. Obviously, you mentioned the, the white label. Um, I think if you do manage and you have managed properties yourself, you'll understand there's certain tools that are tools for everybody, and there's other tools that are not tools for everybody, right? They have to be customized. And I think a proper system actually needs to be able to be adaptable to fit in different needs, where you are not managing like multi families or like boutique like uh, style places where you're single family homes. Your system, if it's built well enough, you need to be customizable that way. But single solutions, like if you have pricing software, you cannot say that pricing software is better for, for different operators. Yes, maybe the UI, the UX, but at the end of the day, they're doing the same thing, right? It, it, maybe how many of you guys have price labs? Raise your hand. How many of you guys have wheelhouse? Raise your hand. How many of you guys have beyond pricing? Raise your hand. You know what I mean? It's like everyone has different systems for their How much time do they have to spend in terms of provider? Have you been on the other side of the table? Because I have, I spend hundreds of hours researching who the best providers you have to work with. And then at the end of the day, maybe you don't even want to swap it. At the end of the day, the, the main thing that you really need is to make sure that it works for what you're doing. It needs to make sure, you need, you need pricing. You don't need any confidence without pricing. You need pricing, you need pricing that works. You need an assumption that works. You need a system that is reliable. You need someone who's actually going to raise a hand and take responsibility over the, the technology. 
And the one that's not in this industry, it's an angel quantum industry. When I was on the other side, I was so frustrated. I launched his providers, nobody took. Some people wouldn't work. Finger quantum. You never know what's all the best. Because everybody's calling and no one's called at the same time. You're like, okay. But I'm the one who's paying the price for it. Nobody's taking responsibility over it. And to me, that's not sustainable. I think the industry just built themselves in a way so that they can shield themselves. And I think that's the problem. The biggest problem when we're in the marketplace is nobody can take responsibility. And the PMS is the way they've been built to Yeah, so here I am. Austin, she's doing a Okay, that's, a bit, that's actually true. I think we have a little bit of everything. Uh, we have two and a half out of, out of the four actors. <laughs> so the integration is like a business. But even the white label, when you think about it. Uh, but I want to go back and think about the consolidation and acquisition. Um, there is nothing more exciting than software providers to talk about how we can consolidate the market even further. For good reason. Uh, for, so, just to give you a few numbers about the concentration, especially in the United States, the, the number of defense contractors went from 107 to 5 in the scope of 20 years. I don't think that's necessarily a winning for everyone. And Amazon sells 75% of all books, 64% of, of all books. Uh, the thing is, at what point is consolidation becoming concentration because it's actually completely detrimental to providing customer value because then software providers have to buy up or completely dependent on it. And then, what is your defense actually? What is your loss as an operator? Because you're all running on the same platform, on the same product. One outage can have a critical impact on the entire financial industry. And I think that that would be completely amazing. We're not in the market um, recognition and recognition software that is basically winner takes all. I would have said a few years ago that winner takes the most, but the reality is that no one, no one can this is really a matter of segmentation. There are three different markets. You have the enterprise, you have the market, you have seller, property, set managers, and they have absolutely different needs and different thesis onto the product that we're building. Um, and going back, there is an example of Slack versus Discord. Um, some of you are using Slack for your business and your company. Um, you may be a gamer and using Discord. You realize this is the same product. It does the same features. They just package slightly differently and more important positions to a different user. So, going back, consolidation and acquisition is a shame in our industry for hundreds or hundreds of billion dollar industry with so many capital that's been injected over so long that you still actually don't have the mergers that are made on expansion of product. It's all about acquisition of a number of listings and never about enriching the user experience because it's still too likely capitalized to really get one of those numbers to get an escape capacity. Even companies that have raised 170, 75 million dollars have still not broken the city. That is really uh, not seen in any other country where that's the case. And again, yeah, the, so based on our form, I have a customer person, I have a customer profile, which is really property owners, uh, sales managers, which are really 85% of the market, 85% of the listings. There are times when we want to integrate these unique, bespoke products that are really going to be that are really fascinated, but it's a gross margin killer. The more integrations we have, the more we have to maintain those integrations to keep our satisfaction up. And that really limits our capacity to develop new features or to expand the scope of integration because some customers are going to be more interested in that type of thing. There is always a customer that wants that type of thing. Uh, and that makes it very difficult to commit on that path for the next 20 years. And we, we are going to be successful because we're going to have 100 engineers working on maintaining account integrations. Very long to propose. We also went into the white label space, so to speak, when it was about building a direct premium offering. We always find that just zooming out, we will always be that every property owner should have an opportunity to list their property directly, but it's very difficult if anything to do so in a way that is maybe sustainable. The first chargeback, the first consolation, the first email of your payment processing, the first guest that's not going to be respecting grass rules without any threat or bad reviews without any insurance, that can create, if anything, that direct movement is fantastic, that can create 
but the pool will be the number of runners that you need yourself to reckon. So we decided that we would be bundling those integrations together, we maintain it, and we provide one package which is close to a project today, customer for tax compliance, uh, going up to remitting taxes for your, for your business. That is going to be doing the payment processing, you don't have to be in your rent or rent. That's going to do the insurance, it's $5 million, that's going to do the gas rating, and all those ancillary services that you need to be really a successful direct booking in business without having to go through the asset market. And that's anything that's one case of us bundling third party offering into one. And that's what everybody in the industry is doing, we are all integrators. And that, I think, is delivering significantly more value. You gain the speed, you can have people able to negotiate terms and basically get that back to the customers because they're going to get something that's probably three times more expensive for them to buy, but because we're able to negotiate that as a software provider, we get that at 30% of the cost. Or not at all. Uh, it is in our case. So that, that's basically my thought. I, I find that, but then again, uh, just like my thoughts are in the what is the goal of it of having only one? That's about not fragmenting your guest experience. And that's about gaining efficiency in your operations. And as long as those two items are there, you can be happy with your tech stack. You can decide to be happy with your tech stack. Absolutely. But you can also decide to be happy with your leader. If your guest has one flow unified that can reinforce your firm and you are still running business efficiently in the focus way, that works. I just think that it's difficult to do so because there are so many obligations and requirements and building this only one that distracts software providers that are using it today from achieving those two things that are called mission critical. There's too many instructions and so on. So we want to contribute to this on the integration piece. I'm not going to say that right now. And on the infrastructure piece as well. But it's it's a problem that is going to be solved by having like new operators because those currently in the market are already thinking stuck on that gross margin problem of having to maintain so many things um, with relatively little capitalization in any case. Um, thank you. Uh, so, I have a very, I think it's a very simple question. Do we want a one one or do we not want a one one? You have to define either one one because it means, <laughs> it means like right now it's like, it's, it means everything and nothing. I think, the, I think we all agree on one thing, but at the end of the day, you really need to fix the problem for the host and, and you have to solve partner issues for the host. Um, I don't think there's going to be one solution to the whole. I, I think that there's a, it's about being true to a problem and really go deep into that problem. And I think the bigger players in the industry have stopped doing that. I think that's where the problem is really mainly coming from. But I think the, Newer generation of software. I think at the end of the day, we can all agree with you on many points, but we all agree on one thing, which we understand that there is a problem in this industry, but it's only recognized by a few, and I think that's the reason why we're encountering a lot of these problems. And um, yeah, for us, like I, I don't know, like when we talk about a white label, I don't know if there's really a category to define us specifically because we do go one partner for specific categories, but we have many partners for other categories. Depends. So in a way, we do have a market that's which is quite simplified things, uh, really for the whole thing at the end of the day. Because me personally, I'm trying to build the software that I that I wish existed when I was a property manager. Because really, I couldn't be a property manager because I was focused on everything else besides the guests. Everything else besides like my final good inventory because I didn't have the time. And my time was spent to trying to negotiate things with the software providers and making them work well one another, connecting to different channels. And that sure didn't work. Pricing didn't sync. <laughs> the other application didn't work. Uh, uh, access control wasn't working properly. And centralized information with automated messages wasn't working properly. It wasn't customized to my life. So that's why I started building. I said. I wanted to be honest with myself and really build the what the ultimate tool that I wanted to have on the place. And I think consolidation is something that we're it's, we're heading into consolidation whether we want it or not, because it has to happen because that's what the consumer in the end of the day wants. And I don't think anybody's providing it as of today. Besides two companies that have stuff. <laughs> um a little back on consolidation though from what you were saying, Daniel. It has nothing to, I don't have 
thing it has to do with the, the one system, I think it just has to do with the operational efficiencies. That's it. Um, if, if different systems spoke together in a way where uh, when one thing happens on one, it updates on the other and sends the information to do whatever you need to do, um, you wouldn't have much conversation. Yeah, but it won't happen if you have a non centralized system that allows for all that. Like Zapier, for instance, that has done that for many other applications because it's, a, it's, a, it's an existing problem in any other industry, but nobody has done that for, for hospitality. You have to have middleware. If you don't have middleware, it's not going to work. Fair. I mean, I would say Zapier is more connected than the centralized middleware. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot and this is where I think looking at some of the tools that we're going to be looking at this uh, after is, is how do we connect the tools that are uh, out there rather than have one center system that feeds all this information. You need to have it. It's not going to work otherwise. And I think there's too much uh, tendency in having one system that governs your entire business. So why is your Amazon work sometimes hundreds of billions of dollars? That's what they do. And it goes, they centralize everything. It's true. If um, you don't have a system that centralizes, it happens in every single industry. I'm not just making this up. Look at any industry, you have a centralized system to centralize that. Your PC works the same in that way, whether you have a Mac or a Windows. That's what an uh, operating system does. Windows also, like, you can have a Windows uh, system or you can have a OS. That's an operating system that centralizes everything for you. And that's where you, all those programs can talk to one another. Otherwise, if you don't have a centralized system, it won't work. I completely agree, but let's look at the verticals of managing a hospitality business. That's what I meant, is when you look at the different verticals of managing a property management business, there's the, the operations, there's the distribution, there's the financials, there's all these different verticals. Now, whether it's one system that covers all three or five, or one system for each, let's put that aside for a second. I think the main debate is finding ways to connect the tools that are out there already that are doing a great job at a specific vertical that you might already be using. I agree. Right away in logging. Let's have a, another panel. On that. No, but <laughs> somebody, <laughs> needs, somebody needs to be responsible. Is it the uh, property manager's yes. responsibility to do that? Spends what we spend at the time, like literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in developing our own technology for what? Somebody else should do that. Like, that's I think it's uh, kind of a balance, right? Like, if you have a property management company and you have your system that you need, then it's up to you to make it, you know, to make the connection so that it works for you, right? That's the customer. I absolutely disagree. I think a level of customization should, should exist, but what's a property manager job? Is, I mean, I'm asking you guys, if you guys join this industry because you want to be involved in technology or, whole, or because you want to host guests? <laughs> well, I mean, to build a business, it's not fine, but to build a business, you need to build systems, right? Any business looks at the property they have and creates a system so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Because the companies same. work with the property, they work with CRMs that are already been built by billions of dollar companies, and, then, and, and they're not developing it themselves. Right. Let's look here and come up, and then I actually have a, a way to. This is what we had to have this panel was a very old job. 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 It. It's a really tough job from China. Um, I, just, I just wanted to propel you to be forward because I think both of you are going to be right. And I think the OTAs are the best. Of course, I've got two groups. And I think the recent development, especially on the side of Airbnb, which is just one of many, but still the prime of the process, is the one to the fact that they have recently went on a wave of opening up the API to more added value service providers. Is that the key step one onto a fundamental evolution? That I think every property management company and has called and been calling uh, for the past few years. We went on that OTA version from a paradigm of monopoly of the connection with the property management software, putting all the responsibility on that, to realizing that actually most of the value for the OTA doesn't come from the PMS, pretty much if you not all when you think about it, but actually from all those added value service providers, pricing, mix experience, and all, all the things that, 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 you, that you need to have on a feature for sir. Feature for per future basis and on the best of breed rather than all being one kind of product. So the best product on its experience, the best product for pricing, not the best overall, nobody knows what it is, but the best for you. And I think because of the investment from that OTA, the better technology is actually we 
probably unlock standard two, which is a fragmentation not based on property of software providers, but really on it. So you have your own OT connection. You can so you can add more with a PFS connection, but you can basically still retrieve and um, gain extract more efficiency if you would like from those OTAs that allow you as a property manager to have your own direct API connection. I think there's still a talk of time for 10 years about basically tech enable property management companies who have operators that become software providers because they have the experience and they wish they would have not known. That's the case for journey, but absolutely not very right in this industry at all. And I think that's that is now made technically possible. I uh, can be transparent about it. Uh, it has been demoed. We have customers that have thousands of listings. Those are the ones that churn and cancel the services from the table, not because they want to switch to another GMS, but because they are building them on. You have the case in Europe of Get Ready, which has not already, because they have enough critical mass to be able to negotiate a notification directly. They build their own. Fragmentation is not having more vendors that are not talking to one another. It's ultimately OT is catching up, changing the paradigm, and allowing the actual people that give them money, that give them the supply, to have their direct connection so that you can have that tech enable business without having to deal with the PMS, but building your own custom processes. I think we were talking before about the moat. I think that is closer to what is a moat for property management companies, because those companies that will be able to invest into their tech will be able to return to, yeah, get more efficiency, seduce more customers or clients to bring them more properties. And that's exactly what I wish for in this industry in particular. So for me, more for a picture than that. <laughs> Comes from a PMS too, right? More on the industry, <laughs> <laughs> the industry level, not for you. As an operator, build your own PMS. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole point. Who should take responsibility of that? Like, I'm all for to have a marketplace, but you need to be able to manage it. Nobody takes responsibility over this integration to be working properly. That's the bottom line problem. So, look, I love it. And I, 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 the only reason I say this is because I fundamentally disagree with it, even though I don't think I've ever views on it. We're both solving the same problem at the end of the day, right? We're in the same, uh, we're headed in the same direction for the property manager. I think as a property manager, you know what your problem is. Maybe one day it's revenue, maybe the different day it's operations, maybe a different day. There is no software out there that's going to dictate what a property manager means. I think a property manager comes in and says, you know what, I'm having a lot of I know. So you have a problem. You're like, you know what, I'm having a lot of messages with yes, we can't seem to answer them. Okay, I'm gonna go hire a VA, or I'm gonna go use a tool, or I'm gonna go do this. I'm saying you're missing the whole point. <laughs> I'm saying the problem is not the fact that you have to have multiple solutions, it's the fact that those solutions don't work with one another and there needs to be someone responsible to fix that. Because this is not sustainable. I have been on the other side, I have managed property, and there's no one that takes responsibility to actually fix this problem for me. So, so I have a question or thought around this. Why not just create the mule saw for the SDR industry? Why not do that? Like an API connector? Yeah. Exactly. So, this, this is where we're at with this slide. I'll give you an example, actually. Scene. So, we were, we were trying to partner with a company for smart locks in the industry. And uh, this was a, a year and a half ago. And they basically, this industry company, I won't name names, came up to me and said, Yeah, we, we can certainly do a partnership. We'll be here and you'll be here. And I was just well, that's a great start for any partnership. Um, and so I do some research on my hands. It's going to be really hard to, to connect all these different devices because one person is August, the next person is Yale, the next person is that. And so we found this company called C. Um, I wish, I know, I wish I had kept it as a secret. I wish I kept it as a secret. Uh, these two now you see, yes, they use C most of the way you use C. Uh, it's basically just an API connector for smart devices, right? That's exactly what you're saying. And I think this is what we're going to see across the board with different verticals, whether it's payment gateways. Uh, I have to go out and integrate Stripe. I have to integrate Linux. I have to integrate this, that. It's so many different resources when really all I'm trying to do is solve a payment piece or whatever the other vertical of your business might be. So I completely agree. I think the, the, the future, and we see I think about 20% of the wide company of the companies in the latest cohort are APIs of something. So I think what that gets at is, one second, what that gets at is, 
companies to start building out some fundamental infrastructure within our space so that peers are not being the wheel and the logs and that's why I was not doing it. But now, guessing is going and using seeing to do the lock information, right? Uh, a few weeks of development time. I have some other tokens up there that's not directly related to the short term rental industry, but play or plan. That's how all the financial institutions are just connecting without everyone having to rebuild that API connection, right? Uh, real quick is one on HR. And merge is another kind of an API company, right? So it seems like it's not like we need VR and A to create an API for the industry, <laughs> but it's more that we need companies, we need companies that identify the problem, and then to your point, Linda, they take responsibility for the fact that that works, and then we as software providers and even end users just expect that to work. So I think that's why I forward it. I just think we're making the same point. Yeah, yeah you need not for something that yeah, yeah. I don't know how to spend it. But uh, <laughs> uh, I think I just want to point something out. Like, you're, we're saying two different things. Like, I'm not saying that there is a angels who shoot the first person of the first person of the first person And yes, there's going to be some property managers. They want to be tech savvy and they want to go the right. But just like the computer industry, there's the high cost and digital side of things. There's also companies that come in and start the right things. And I think the majority of people want to have a product that works and is reliable and puts together all these different API connections because we're talking about API, right? We're talking about 90% of the host, but don't know how to work with an API. So, yeah, you're seeing your point of view, but only from the tech side of stuff. But for being a tech person, not being a host. So I was in university before this. I have zero experience in platform management, so completely agree. Um, but my only, I think we're saying the same thing here, and we're not asking anyone to build any APIs. I think the argument is just that the movement for defragmenting this industry is companies that are focusing on API codes to create collaboration. That's a great point. That is, that is, now whether we wrap it under one system, whether we let you choose the different systems, that's a whole debate in of itself. But I think the overall solution to fragmentation is collaboration over competition. It's collaboration over all centralization of this information and data, as we've seen with OTAs, as we've seen with DMSs, and as we've seen with other systems. You're just seeing one small component, <laughs> which is, uh, which is uh, the, probably the biggest technology revolution that we are ever going to encounter as humanity, which is AI and not having a centralized system with all the data, you basically have a powerless AI. We are probably the most advanced company in the industry working with AI. We are the only one who actually has real life products with AI. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of products out there that you, you guys can see it for yourself what we are doing and uh, we can actually substitute already what a lot of uh, moving parts are made by you because we have a centralized system. If you don't have a centralized system, then that will work. Just, just a point one more time. So, uh, we have one question after that, and then we can do I believe that one thing that makes uh, this, one thing that makes this fragmentation very painful is the lack of standardization. Because one of the difficulties with integrating with so many APIs is that there are different languages, what is a booking, what is a reservation, a multiple, a hold, a tentative thing, etc. Uh, why do we need to have dozens of cancellation policies different for each channel, each PMS, etc., etc.? And that's where I believe, in a way, we would not need centralization of ownership, et cetera, but we would need a common language so that these apps talk together. Absolutely. And it's a work that we all have to do together. I think the RMA is a great place for it to start. We'll need the OTAs to work. But if we find a common language, then fragmentation will not be so, far, so painful. And it's the work that we could all do together. <laughs> do you know any standards for reservations you have in this industry? We once had a shot of something everything. <laughs> Always. There, um, so you, you have implementations of those standards. That's actually the biggest problem because you're forcing channel managers, or program software, and channel distribution to basically, hey, have a nice product. 
Das ist bestimmt leise, das ist ja natürlich, das kann ja nicht tun, wenn man das damit erkennt. Aber was macht das? Ja, ich muss ja nicht mehr so gut sein, wenn das auch so gut ist. Hey, komm mal, make money, I want to make money, I'm going 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 to make money, I'm very different question. I love Airbnb's API and it's really modern and evolved into its standards are frozen on the ice age. Whereas another API that does it in mobile can actually react to when you change it. Something happened to us two or three years ago that has an API done everything and we needed to react strongly about this consolation policies and all. I would read proposed a GPT every every time over that API is something unified and clear. But it's true that it needs to be very easy to develop with property management software um, with, um, with other channels ready. I believe, I believe we're already leading towards that this PMS class definitely won't need a connectivity partner. It just means you will have more direct access to proprietary data bucket that your OTA is only about your guests. So we have, uh, a few months ago, released a product that was with Able Connect. I'm sorry, I won't do this speech. It's a software thing for software providers that don't have an OT integration that we like to have it. Um, and we're basically releasing it with, uh, I think, a dozen companies that have implemented it for that in production. Which basically means that from API where their customers can connect their API account and be able to manipulate their API data without having to deal with the, the burden of managing the own API integration. And it's a product where we are doing zero money. We are developing it. It's free for the b 2 as and others. It's free to the end user as well. Because we believe the biggest opportunity that we face in this industry is the fact that these things are not API connected, which causes a problem for the OTA in terms of retention. Because the problem for the operators of any size because they're lacking the efficiency and therefore they become bigger and stop their business altogether. And it creates a fragmented tech experience all over the place. You reach a free retirement operator industry. That's all the best and best things we between several different apps. But that's all the money can. But I, I really, there, there were talks for the past five years about that standard API. I remember that very distinctly. The people that were in this panel were the people that were enterprise, 1,000 plus properties. And they wanted to set terms to property and stuff like that. Um, I don't think, it, I don't think anything. Come of it. It was basically, and I don't suspect we're really more about what features we are coming in with. And so that was really a, a big gap between what I was expecting in those conversations and what actually that like. It was again on the PMS side, integrated with the PMS side. And I think you're going to what we're doing with those people connected to the OTA to facilitate the work of adding value to service providers is basically going to happen at the same time. Especially with that phase two on Airbnb opening up the API to more property management companies directly, with a very low, with a lower, the first one that gets lower and lower, is that you really need to have those connectors to integrate with your property management software as well. Do you want more questions? Well, that's sort of a question. To your point, I feel like that is something for a to actually lead on its own vocabulary for the industry. It's actually doing some standardization that everybody could uh, feel towards. Is international. That is something I think firm up do and would be really helpful in the industry. Do you agree or do you not think that they should be? I think it's going to be very difficult for an organization to force the tech roadmap. Uh, and then also just in general, like we all use different languages, uh, the program or our, our back end, front end, whatever. Uh, we all have different data models based on how we're structuring the information and what we need it for. Um, I think one of the basics is going to be just the commonality around uh, naming some of the variables. It's going to be amazing if you could not like have your API in Spanish, if your PMS is paying for like do your API in English, that'd be great. Uh, things like that would be awesome. But uh, standardizing APIs to that level is going to be very difficult. I have yet to see a connector of, of PMS. I think there was a there was a company we'd seen a, a year ago or something that was supposed to connect all the PMSs and provide it as access to. To, to operators. So again, we're not going to see, I think it'd be very difficult to see what you suggested, uh, but there's some work that can be done by the RMA for sure 
uh, to help technology companies at least share the key variables that we can all use to promote innovation. Absolutely. And I think if it was if it's kind of a top-down approach, I think the amount of future potential innovation actually gets cycled at a certain point because that's all we can do. That, that's kind of you know, maybe that's mom's problem. We know it's already focused on getting that innovation spur in, right? Okay, so I have a couple of things to say questions. Um, and they kind of go in two different directions. So one is how this is likely, maybe this is a topic for, for another day, but basically what it is, I've heard in the past, it's spoken that when you're talking about valuing, valuation of a property management company, that white labeling is the way to go. That you do not want to be selling a digital management company having just you know a tech stack that's 15 deep because your your company is, is really has no value. Really, at that point, you might as well be selling it based on contract if you're a property management company because you don't have anything as a value as an asset that's associated other than the actual contracts. So I'd like to get your opinion on that. Um, another one is what is it that is its biggest Roadblock to open API right now. Is it money? Is it time? What is the number one roadblock for open API? And the last one is Francois. Does the Airbnb office process right now? <laughs> um, I can answer that second. Third one, third one, yes, now we've been working with the right classes, so now they know my name. They're an amazing team, quite frankly. Um, I, I don't know if I can say this, but like, they actually are. Uh, but the, the second part about why don't we have an open API and why do companies want there's two, two parts to it that you look at it. First is do they even have an API? Um, have they built the documentation? Um, have they gone through that engineering work to create a structure where other companies can come and be partner with them and connect with them? Um, but I think the second one is control the data. Because if you control all of the information in the data, you are in a position of power. You get to decide who you get to work with and who you don't want to work with and so on. Um, you know, a lot of operators talk about wanting emails, 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 emails. I want emails from every market to my guests and so on. Um, it's interesting because why do you think your Airbnb or VRBO.com don't share that? Why do they not share that information with you? Well, because it's part of their value proposition. So at every level of an integration, there's a bit of information that's being left out because it's very unique to that system that's holding it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm, I'm sending the information to ABC, but A is really valuable for me, so I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to give you B and C. And then company right under that is giving B, C, D, but they're going to keep B because it's really valuable for their system. And so it's just this triple effect. I, I think more, I'm going to go back to what I was saying, a more collaborative approach between different industry pairs is what's ultimately going to end up solving all the operational how do we get there? I think groups like Verba are an amazing, you know, are amazing communities that can help push all these tech companies towards that, uh, towards creating open APIs, towards sharing that data. Yeah, about making the great industry. I think it will for a long time. <laughs> uh, I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, I'm sorry. 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 You need to give me all this API information so I can centralize it to a single place. I'm sure that that eventually is going to happen when you decide, ah, uh, I just think we're going to take a long time before we need to go back to that direction. And Kuti is a very significant burden on the paradigm holy PMS integration scope. Um, I think on the PMS side, it's really a problem of having to get so many things at the same time and being on so many fronts. The API unless it's specific uh, products that really are going to be uh, API first or really spend a lot of time in I think Lightly R was a fantastic example of that that was really investing a lot. That's what happened. What happened to them? Acquired, shut down. <laughs> Too bad. Um, and it's basically part of the, the execution required to copy over and deliver so many, so many features, including something that's going to be indexable and differentiated while working on the same basis. So yeah, the API is something that I've realized myself, for example, it was pretty more with something that was a little bit left on the side, and now we invested significantly more, especially to get those, that collaboration between products talking to one another, 
Um, so for example, we are we're going to be building specific APIs that any provider can integrate with Suitable and push data as we format it so that then we can show the data on our inbox, on our calendar, in our know, metrics and dashboards. So that basically it's not our problem because that's a cross managing killer. They are going to do the integration work anyway because for those added value service providers, we are not able to look at their after our customers, but we're going to require a push your data over to us. If you're going to provide value anyway, that's going to be distinct, but push that data over to us so that we can consolidate and we'll go back to your product whenever that's really valuable for your customer to do so. We basically open the floodgates on, on a lot of features in the product and allow to have as many operators, as many different service providers as we can because it's not our cost, that's the cost of their, their product. They want to do that in the first place. And you must also about the really having assets as a, as a property manager. Um, I, I, I was on that end as well, because like when I, I raised money from the teams as a, a management company, I needed to, to, to start showing some of our own technology, but that's like a really <laughs> dangerous path to take because you can really go uh, really far. I'm a big believer that there needs to be some type of base that is standardized and built and solid, so you can build on top of. Uh, I try to do that on top of uh, PMSs and the PM work. But I think in systems like, I'm hoping many more than 30, uh, it's going to be a great place to actually start building stuff on top of. We have a large company who actually, uh, some of them I cannot share names of, um, even on the multi-family side, that they're building their own guest app on top of our system. And they're, um, and so we provide all the technology from their end and from our investor standpoint now they can show a lot of technology that they have built. I think also when we were talking about like labels, when we were looking at it as well from a technology perspective, and the, the difference between the technology there and property management there is that um, you're not really undervalued for, for what labeling technology and other technology in the SaaS world as much as that might be the case with property management specifically, because now we're talking about a service based. So, Does it helps. not add value though? I mean, that's always been my understanding is that if you have a tech piece in place that's proprietary to your company, that there is an added value when you go to sell your property management company. Is that not true? There, there is and there is from a branding standpoint, I think. Like, I think, like, owning, for example, a guest mobile app or a guest web app with your branding and specific functionality. That's what we see a lot of uh, these larger management companies, like, on the multi family space that they're coming into the short term rental space. That's not really what they're doing. Um, they, they want to have this unified experience for both their, their long term states and their short term states, all in one app, all controlling the single system. That's where I see a lot of value. That's one. Yeah, I was just saying that this is a perfect segue what you're saying because um, I think it's like, like, it's not about the, the app itself, the technology that they own, it's about the data. And over the past two, three years, money was pretty much free. And so a lot of property management businesses decided to become tech companies because you can get money by saying you're a tech company. Um, I, you know, I'm not gonna point any names, but you could go out there and say we are a tech and they will cost fatality. Yes, $20 million on an $80 million post, great. And you're not even profitable, you don't have revenues, you're a service-based property management company, but you can get that money. So now you have to show something. And I have seen property management systems built on the property management systems, built on channel managers. I mean, it's like the most, remember what I said about how the top layer gives information and then they keep a bit of it, and it goes to the second hour. Imagine the same systems doing that together. They're all identical, but they're working together. So the, the one at the bottom is just not a good system, uh, but they got to raise money on it and it helps with their overall business. So I would say value your data more than any of the technology that you're thinking of building necessarily. Do build something that helps plug in gaps. Uh, the value more the data that you collect. Uh, who are your guests? Why do they come back? Why can you market them so well? And you know, you're a property you're a tech enabled property management business, you're not a tech business. If that makes sense. Do we have time for one last question? Thank you. I'm, I want to tell you that I'm not encouraging you all. <laughs> for, for those of us that aren't always in tech, and the old mobile guy too, I remember when, when software came out, you got your Lotus and your Word and, uh, and Excel, and they eventually both changed enough to become just one type of system. The more they changed, the more they became the same. Word perfect, Word, I mean, you go down the list of, of different technologies that continue to change. 
And so for us average guys on the street trying to figure out what to do here on a daily basis, essentially what I hear you saying is that, okay, if there is a central database, a central system, more than likely a PMS that's open enough to the APIs out there, that, that uh, whoever at the end of the end of the day becomes the best you know, pricer, the best uh, communicator with guests, the best one of those, you know, let the best man win. But we're still a long way from that. That's what I'm what saying. 100%. And that's where you have to do the business, right? Ask a lot of questions. Figure out what are the key problems you're trying to solve. Uh, we'll talk about pricing. We'll talk about guest experience. I think people jump into software too quickly. It, it's marketed as, as everything that you might want. So ask the right questions and go through those demos. I mean, I, again, I'm sure, I don't know how much you don't do demos because you, you cater to hosts. Um, do you do demos? <laughs>